welcome uh, everyone to this talk around managing GitOps deployments in multi-cluster production environments. My name is Roberto Caratala and I'm a Cloud Services Black Belt working for Red Hat. And let's today imagine that we are part of a DevOps team that we have a duty and it's the deploy my applications in multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters across multiple regions um, in the world. So we are using different hyperscalers and also on-premise and we wanted to build our um, deployment and we wanted to deploy our applications across different hyperscalers including AWS, uh, on-premise, Google Cloud, Azure and also uh, bringing the hybrid uh, multi-cloud um, scenario. And for that reason, we wanted to deploy our application. We need to deploy first our application and we need to first log in to uh, the cluster. Then we need to log in into the cluster as well to see the health of the application. We wanted to also um, use Helm charts uh, and then the business unit brings more applications on the table. We need to manage the cluster config and everything. It's increasing with complexity and uh, we will end like this. So for trying to avoid uh, being like this, we wanted to implement, uh, we wanted to embrace as a, a DevOps team, GitOps. We already know the GitOps principles is, but it's very, very quickly, the system is described declaratively. We have the desired state version in Git. For that reason, we have the possibility to approve changes that can be apply, uh, applied automatically. And there is a controller that exists and detects um, acting, for example, and detecting these trips. And one implementation um, and one tool that is super useful is Argo CD, we already all know. Um, things that it's super good is that can uh, detect the drift, uh, also have granular control over uh, sync orders, we have this uh, rollback and uh, roll forward, and there is uh, super fancy that um, is able to support the manifest templating, like Helm, Customized, and others. So the first pattern that we wanted to introduce is that we can define our applications, our Argo CD applications as another um, Kubernetes manifest. So we can define applications, projects and settings and we can define our infrastructure as code. We have our source, destinations and sync policy as well. The source is defined what, as the, uh, what is the source. The destination is in which cluster that could be in the same cluster that it's uh, Argo CD deployed or remote clusters, and we will see, and also the sync policies. That is what happens when detected drifts between the um, uh, Git repository and the live cluster as well. So also for doing uh, this in a um, GitOps way, we wanted to introduce Customize. Um, for, uh, everyone uh, knows that uh, Customize is a way to at least uh, add, remove uh, or update the different configuration without a need to fork. Also, we have this templateless uh, templating system and uh, we can manage a lot of uh, different environments just with one hierarchy and we wanted to do that uh, in this scenario. So the first, ah, by the way, we have this repository, everything is uh, sourced and you can uh, scan this QR code. This QR code will appear again, uh, again and also you have this URL. This URL will um, land in this specific repository and it's fully open source and you can run it and you can deploy it. So let's uh, go to the first one and in the first demo we have um, our um, Argo CD here, we have um, our Argo CD um, empty and we wanted to deploy our application in uh, this exact same Argo CD using the application set that we are using here. Check this because this is uh, important, we are deploying our application in the exact same server. So um, with this um, awesome Wi-Fi that it's providing, uh, let's see if uh, there is a live demo. Let's see if this will deploy properly. And yeah, as you can see, we deployed very quickly the different Kubernetes manifest that we have already here. We are using all of um, the resources here um, define it. And as you can see, we are using an Argo CD application. So nothing new under the sea. But what happened if I wanted to deploy my applications into remote cluster? 
I wanted to scale and I wanted to deploy my application that uh, is composed by a front end and a back end. And I wanted to um, also manage the order. So I went first to deploy my uh, back end, my, or my uh, database, and I then wanted to uh, deploy my uh, front end in order to have control. First thing is that remote clusters can be added as a managed clusters into Argo CD. So the cluster credentials that you have are stored as another Kubernetes uh, object. The only thing that needs is that each secret must have a label specifically that needs to define as a secret type cluster and then will appear like this. So I'm using different clusters, including yes, I'm using a Red Hat OpenShift in AWS, I'm using an on-premise clusters. So you can control whatever you want. The only requirement is that needs to be a Kubernetes cluster. For that reason, will appear as a um, secret, and then you can tag as we will see. Another thing is that we define the clusters that we ha have already managed, then we need to tie this into Argo CD. So you mentioned before, and we mentioned before, that um, you can define whatever you want or uh, whatever uh, destination that you are applying. So the destination reference to the target cluster and namespace is tied to this name and cluster. But you need to define the server or the name can be used, not both. So you, if you wanted to deploy, you need to specify the API or the name of the cluster that you have and under the hood, Argo CD will solve this in order to deploy it. Also, we wanted to uh, introduce sync waves and hooks. That is a way to order because we want first, not everything uh, deploys as a big bang. We need to first deploy our backend and then deploy our uh, frontend as we will see. And also we will use hooks that uh, these hooks can run before, during and after sync operation. I'm using specifically these hooks in order to um, add a, a call uh, in order to have a health check if uh, everything um, is working properly. So this more or less is the um, f workflow that I wanted to follow. I wanted to sync my application that it's in one repository using Argo CD, pushing all of these steps in our remote cluster and I wanted to use it just with one command. So this will be the second demo, hopefully <laughs> will succeed or not. We can just copy this. And as you can see in the application, I'm defining the destination and the namespace as well of the cluster. So if I will go again to this, you can see that the application is being deployed, but with a specific order. This specific order is maintained using the sync waves flag, but also the most important part here is that we are using the destination. So if you check here, this is a different destination that we already saw. So it's not, deploy, uh, not deploying the application alongside with the Argo CD. It's using the different settings that we have in here in order to deploy in my cluster. And with that, how about deploying multiple related applications at once? Because we saw the first application, but if you need to scale this to a 20 applications, 40 applications into different clusters, it's very, very, very difficult. It's not quite easy. For that reason, it's introducing, and we wanted to introduce application sets. Application sets is a, a CAD that uh, you can use for multiple things to use a single Kubernetes manifest to target multiple different uh, clusters of Kubernetes. Or also you can deploy multiple applications from one or uh, multiple uh, Git repositories, as we will see in this demo, and improve support of many repos. I'm using monorepo because um, it's very, very handy in order to maintain the different environments and the different uh, configurations that you have. And also within these multi-tenant clusters, improves the ability to um, add the cluster tenancy in order to deploy your applications as well. For that reason, we are using the different generators. These are um, more or less the most important generators. There are more. And there are list generators, cluster generators, and Git generators as well. And the matrix generator that combines are different. So list generators is that we already saw that based on fixed list of cluster names, you can deploy. Um, the different applications in, our, in, in the application set. 
the cluster generator, we will see that is a automatically generate cluster parameters. And finally, the Git uh, generator, it's based on the different folders. So you can store everything that you have in one specific um, hierarchy and then deploy uh, the different development environments, staging environments, or production environments. We will see. So what's our uh, demo? What's our pattern? We wanted to deploy dev environment, stage environment, and product environment in uh, with one command and with one um, uh, file, one Kubernetes manifest. And we will use this application set. So if we go to the demo three, we will see that uh, we have um, staging, prod, and uh, demo environments. And here we have the three different environments. So if we go to the prod environment, we will see this generator. So this generator, it's uh, pointing to the Git repository. And this Git repository, uh, we have here, for example, the different uh, dev environments that uh, we already saw, and also the applications. So if we show here, we will see the different environments that we have. And if we deploy this, we'll deploy the different application sets and boom. A lot of different applications in different environments are used in order to scale, in order to, um, for example, uh, tie the different projects that we have or the different applications and very easily we can scale. So also we can uh, define this and if we add another folder here in the um, devmv or in the broadmv, automatically this will acknowledge and will deploy our application without doing anything because can scale and uh, supports also the um, different hierarchy using this generator. So now that we have clear how we can use the Git generator, how about the GitOps multi-cluster deployment strategies? Because we wanted to automatically generate the cluster parameters. We don't want to specify, for example, the cluster. We wanted to deploy our application in every single uh, managed um, uh, Kubernetes cluster that we have in Argo. So with this, we can check the different clusters that we have. In other ways, we have four clusters. And the thing is that we will use this cluster generator that you will see here in order to uh, deploy our application and our specific um, uh, Kubernetes manifest to every single uh, Kubernetes that uh, we have. And for that reason, we will deploy our welcome app in different Kubernetes clusters that we have. So for doing that, we need to go to the fourth demo. Let me go to the readme here of the fourth demo. Here you have um, also well, more or less the rational and how you can add multiple clusters independently uh, that is um, in the cloud or on premise as well. And with this, we will see that these applications that we have, let me clean the different filters because I'm using Argo project as well. And we will deploy the fourth demo. As you can see, let me just filter for one specific demo. We are using and we are deploying the exact same application using this generator. So if we go specifically to one generator that we have here, the multi-cluster application, we are using this generator in order to scale and define and tie every single cluster that we have in, uh, inside of Argo CD Manage. And we are deploying the exact same application in the different clusters, as you can see. So we don't define um, the um, clusters that we are managing manually. We are using just this generator in order to scale. But we have some times that we wanted to have control. For that reason, how about uh, deploying my multiple environments into multiple clusters? So we want to tie different environments that we already saw in different clusters. We wanted to deploy the uh, development environments and, uh, into the development clusters. And we wanted to define that this environment needs to be tied to this um, specific cluster. And if uh, anything happens in Everything, uh, for example, needs to be um, checked and um, detecting these drifts as well. 
So um, for avoiding this, that work fi uh, fine in depth, but uh, there is an ops problem now that we already know, um, we wanted to also implement this multi-clustering. And how we can do that? We can label a selector that can be used to narrow uh, to one specific target clusters. So we are saying that this application set that it's a DevEnv multi-cluster app will deploy our application just in the cluster that is um, labeled as a dev. Dev equal true. You can put whatever you want. It's just uh, another label. But this would also require to match the Argo CD cluster secrets with the application set selector because it's the way to tie one thing with the other. It's like the Kubernetes services that it's tying with the uh, deployment. This is more or less the same. We are defining specifically the selector that we are uh, deploying. So in the last demo, we are defining the different GitOps in a multi-cluster and multi-environment um, strategy. So we have this specific environment in the uh, fifth demo. So you can see here, we will uh, to the uh, readme. By the way, you have um, this to patch automatically the different cluster managed secrets in Argo City. So I'm defining, for example, the different clusters that I have here in order to say that this cluster is for development, this cluster is for staging, this cluster is for production. And this, for example, I'm using Red Hat uh, OpenShift in AWS. Um, I tied this specifically to uh, my production cluster. So if I go to the cluster 2, this is just a secret. And if we see the secret, for example, we will see that this have a label, prot true. And for that reason, also, if I deploy in a couple of just seconds, we will see. Let's go to the application. As you can see, we have our application and I will, yeah, perfect. We have our three applications that it's an awesome, uh, awesome app for the three different environments. Let's go to this specific environment and also in the details, we will see that this is tied to the cluster two, because if, we, uh, if you, you check, for example, also the uh, different uh, path, we will see the path that it's pointing to one specific production environment. And this is controlled for the specific Argo CD application set that is tying the cluster selector of prod, and also it's deploying in one specific uh, cluster that um, have the label and is matching also the label from prod. And also it's tying the source of the app demos prod env. So I can tie the prod env with the specific generator of the cluster that it's uh, marking with this label. So with this, the last pattern is how to promote between GitOps environments. I tried and I had this conversation so many times and usually um, there are some teams that have not a very good relationship with uh, GitFlow at all. For that reason, we suggest and um, uh, Kostas from uh, Codefresh um, published a very good uh, repos uh, repository and blog post as well around how to promote between different uh, GitOps environments. So basically it's not using branches, it's using hierarchy is using this type of hierarchy. You have, uh, you can use uh, customize or you can use whatever uh, it's suited. Also, you can um, use hamchas as well in order to scale. And um, when you wanted to uh, promote from one environment to another, just simply copy. It's very, very easily. So we have uh, this uh, version and we wanted to update this uh, image, for example. For updating this image, we can just promote from this and we can copy. And for, for, for example, for promoting one application from dev to a staging in the US, we need to just copy the version YAML or the difference between one and the other and publish. This would um, allow us to uh, not use the branching system and uh, not having things like cherry pick. This is a very silly and uh, very simple example, but imagine with hundreds of different applications and in production, uh, it's a little bit tricky. So um, with this, 
uh, end my uh, talk. Uh, if there is any question, please uh, go ahead. And if not, yeah. The sync wave, sorry? Yeah, does the sync wave want to deploy the, or take down the uh, uh, objects the same Correct. way? Correct. Okay. Yeah, right. if um, respects also the order, because it's the finite that needs to have uh, minus one, but also for uh, deleting, deletes also in uh, the order. And you can apply also the hooks yeah. in order to do uh, several things like um, wipe me out, uh, the database wants uh, everything it's, it's okay and if fails for example page me uh, with a page of duty or something like that makes sense thanks brilliant uh, hi Roberto uh, good talk can you uh, talk a little bit more details about how the Argo CD is connecting, authenticating against the, the different clusters. Absolutely. I know there's Argo CLI that you can configure an mm -hmm. extra, a remote cluster, but it does something with service accounts, but in cloud uh, Kubernetes, that is not the pattern. And Yeah, you know. that's, that's a very, very, very good question as well. Uh, so I faced also this um, challenge when I tried to a scale with a, a remote clusters, for example. Um, there is uh, part of this guy that I usually uh, do the kubectl login, but um, for uh, clusters in the cloud, it's very tricky because uh, in uh, some uh, clusters like in AKS, um, needs to have uh, this uh, kube config that it's maintaining uh, along the time. And there is no uh, saver wallet. You, I usually maintain uh, everything in the exact same uh, cube config and I'm uh, doing uh, this switch context in order to uh, at least have one single file and try to uh, mimic and try to have every single file, uh, every single Kubernetes API um, in one specific file and I can change the different uh, context. But uh, there is a very tricky uh, way, for example, if you have to authenticate to uh, one specific uh, AAM or to uh, open ID in order to grab this configuration because it needs to have it every time and Argo is not aware of that. So Argo is just having the secrets and inside of the settings, for example, you have the different uh, secrets and there is one invalidate cache in order to um, add and regenerate the cache. But I mean, needs to have these um, uh, secrets because it's just uh, an API and a token. And if this token uh, ends and the DTL uh, of the token is very, very short, I mean, you are you need to re-instantiate uh, the cluster and sometimes the objects that are already deployed are a little bit tricky. Yes, sir. I can repeat the, the question if you want to. Hi, uh, great talk. Um, I mean, I we use the same. We use the the app. The app set has been very powerful for us. We find it very amazing that hey, we want data dog. Con we want data dog control on every cluster. Mm -hmm. One helm chart magically. Okay, thirty of clusters all get it all at once. All right. I'm curious about like we have this situation where um, in an environment, let's say dev, <clears throat> in dev, they're all in the same data center, and you have one cluster, cluster one, um, and we call it dev cluster. But then, well, now we set up a, a parallel cluster that, for various reasons, and we have we have an issue of like what you how you name that in your app in, in your app generator because then like yeah. okay that's just a random character now we're stuck with that forever and the values will be stuck with that forever, so I'm not sure how how what's your suggestion in that scenario? That's a very good question, and I have not straight answer if I'm honest because I I'm struggling with the exact same way. Uh, the thing is that you need to uh, maintain more or less the rational between uh, the different clusters that you are using and also tagging the clusters, it's a good approach. And you have uh, the different labels and you only uh, see here one label, but you can assign different labels that could be meaning, uh, uh, could have a meaning for you. For example, that this cluster is just ephemeral and needs to have a, an uh, end of life of this and will be uh, wiped out. But also you need to go to uh, every single Argo and define it. Good thing is 
also all of the settings that you are here, uh, do, do you are seeing here can be automated and can be uh, put it as a code. So you can define your own clusters as a code. For that reason, you can define first the clusters as a code. You need to maintain, obviously, the API, but at least you have the possibility to tag and maintain more or less the order. But yeah, it's a, it's a common issue that happens as well to me. Thank you. My pleasure. All right then. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your patience. And uh, yeah, the demo uh, went well. Yay, with this uh, awesome uh, Wi-Fi. Thank you very much for your patience and your assistance. <laughs>